What's going on guys? Vic VB back with another Game Case RKs video. On this one today, we're looking at the 32 inch curve slash slimline arcade cabinet, 10,000 games, Pandora box build. And customer requested a custom power switch on the side of the cabinet. Let's take a look. Okay. This I could get used to. 2024, a great way to start off the new year. New stuff going on, new camera. That's actually what I mean in the beginning of this. I have a new camera, so I'm getting, I could get used to this because I can actually now see myself. New stuff, but same old intro. You know the social media plug. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You will see everything. Going heavy on socials, definitely this year. Again, be sure to follow me, Instagram, TikTok. We're gonna go into TikTok on this build because just TikToks, the views and all that is just mind boggling stuff. Also, if you notice now, my biggest thing, my biggest goal for 2024 is to stream more. And so far, so good. I've been doing it on a constant basis, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursday mornings. Uh, again, just getting into gaming and all that. Again, be sure to follow me on all the socials. Instagram, TikTok, you got Facebook, and YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube so you get everything there. Right now, so close. Again, if you look at like my earlier videos, I didn't really care about the subscriber count, the viewer count. I still don't care too much, but it is kind of just cool to see just numbers and views and comments and just activity. So it is pretty cool to see. Almost very close to 7,000 subscribers. That is just... <laughs> I was so happy at one subscriber. I was still happy at 10. I was still happy at a thousand, two thousand. It's just the numbers keep going up. So again, big thank you to all of you guys and gals who are watching my videos. <laughs> 7,000 subscribers is, I never thought I would get to that. But again, thank you guys for watching. Enough of that, you know the social media plugin. On this one today though, we're gonna be looking at this right here, the Game Room Solutions 32 inch Slant or curve? I believe it's the curve, I should say. It is the curve cabinet slim line. We're gonna be talking about a couple of the pros and the cons and a couple of headaches that I had. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about the 10,000 games Pandora box build on this and a couple of custom things that the customer needed. As you saw in the beginning of the video, he did want a unique power switch placement. So, you know me, get ready. I'm gonna talk a lot. <laughs> Now again, quickly, I do have a new camera. This camera is specifically bought for pinball. Uh, it's a great, again, if you've been watching my stuff, you would see my new pinball streams. I've been streaming my Godfather and my Toy Story. I specifically bought this camera to get the play field view. And I'm very happy with the results of this camera. I'm so happy I'm actually going to get another one. This way it can act as a webcam and such. So yes, I am getting used to some things. This could shoot in 4K, but I'm right now just testing the water. So we're still at 1080p. Uh, but yes, that is the quick spiel about the camera. Again, today we're going to be looking at this right here. Again, the 32 inch curve. This is the curve cabinet from Game Room Solutions. <gasps> Vic, Game Room Solutions, I, you're still ordering? Yes, I'll go through the whole entire spiel on why I still offer Game Room Solutions cabinets. Basically, long story short, I have customers that want my builds. Vic, I want you, I want you to build it and I appreciate it, that is awesome. I am a one man team. I don't have anybody working for me. I don't care about, I wanna make a thousand, I don't do that. I am the person that wants quality over quantity. So, some people do want my stuff, but they may say that I'm a little bit too expensive on the expensive side, so I do offer a lower price option, which is getting a Game Room Solutions cabinet Again, there are pros and cons to it. This one right here, like I said, I'm gonna go over the whole thing. I don't even know where to start, but we're gonna go over the whole thing. And uh, this is also partially a difficult reason why I, I hate dealing with people. This again is a third party kind of setup, meaning the cabinet. And with that, I gotta deal with headaches from third party. This right here, when I tell you how long it took to build, you're gonna go awooga because Game Room Solutions, I don't know what is up, but uh, Let's just say uh, they fucked up twice. 
<laughs> Again, I'll be going through the whole spiel on it. Again, on this one, we're going to be talking about the cabinet itself. This isn't a review for it. I just, honestly, there's not many pictures, videos of this cabinet. I'm also hesitant to, you know, title this video. Um, but it is what it is. I actually, honestly, the design of this is nice. The biggest thing the customer wanted, he wanted something slim. And this right here is the slimmest cabinet. You know, he also wanted a 32 inch cabinet. He didn't want to do a 27 inch. So it is slim. I'm going to take advantage of this. We're going to, you know, I'm going to be talking a lot of it. You know, if we kind of ignore, you know, the hiccups I had with Game Room Solutions and the mistakes they made, it is, it's a good cabinet. I, I can't knock it. It is a great looking cabinet. Again, this is MDF. Ikea style cam lock furniture type of setup uh, and it works. It does what it does. I will probably have one suggestion which I should have done when I was using them. Um, but again, we're gonna be talking about that later on. I think the best way to start this video is let's talk about the customer himself. Um, I think that's gonna be the best way to start this because then you'll understand why we went to this kind of route. This customer is the same customer that dropped off his crane game to me. If you saw my Past videos is one or two videos of me getting a crane game. I didn't buy it. This customer basically saw my truck on the street. His wife saw it and was like, hey, you know, put me in contact with his husband. Husband said, hey, Vic, I have a crane machine that I got on auction. It doesn't work. Are you willing to help me out? And sure enough, yes, I did. When he came to drop off his crane, obviously I'm, I'm in my house. I do everything in my house from my home location. I do have also my personal arcade downstairs, which is also a showroom type of setup so he did come in even before he gave me the crane he was like hey Vic I'm looking for an arcade cabinet for my Airbnb this is a great example because this right here is perfect for an Airbnb setup so I said okay cool when you drop off the crane you'll check out my arcades and such he was looking at like the works he wanted like a four player cabinet with the light guns and the guitars and I was like listen you right now mentioned the word Airbnb PC-based systems and Airbnb don't mix. That, those are the words that you shouldn't use in the same sentence. The only thing I ever suggest for Airbnb commercial space kind of setup is a Pandora box build. As you see in the videos, I turned it off. I turned it on. It booted. That is it. You don't want to be home at 9 o'clock at night and some Airbnb person's like, hey, I don't know how to start the computer and it didn't work and I don't, I, I'm not a, you don't want to deal with that. The Pandora box is the way to go. Now, keep in mind the downside is you don't have all the games. There is no light gun to this. There is no trackball to this. You need a PC-based system. But again, if you're looking for a commercial solution, again, strangers, random people that don't know arcades, they don't know computers, they just want to walk up and play Pac-Man, the Pandora box is the only way to go. <laughs> it's the only way. Now, when he did come here, I showed him my basement. I have basically almost everything. I really have everything I built. Uh, he saw my Buy Vic 4 player. He fell in love with that. He's like, Vic, I want that. That thing is an eye grabber. It looks like four people could play it, so you don't have to wait and take your turns. I want that. Then he laid eyes on my Neo Geo cabinet. The Neo Geo cabinet, I love my Neo Geo. Oh man, the gold slot, I called it, with the dual uh, tablet screens and all that. That's, that's a personal favorite of mine. He saw the Neo Geo cabinet, he goes, actually Vic, I like the design of this cabinet because it's very slim. It's not out, it doesn't stick out as much. Obviously a four player cabinet, my buy Vic, that, it's, it's deep. You got your cabinet and then you got the control panel, it's deep. So he was like, Vic, I like the four player, but it's just a little bit too big for the space I want. I like the Neo Geo. Now, here's my biggest thing. Me building my cabinets and I've done it, you know, I think what, now two years now? three years now that I've cut my own since day one ever since I tested it I cannot cut plexiglass I could cut it with a track saw but it is such a pain in the ass to cut I just rather not deal with it what am I getting at basically me personally I'm not a fan of the enclosed cabinets this right here to my terminology my definition this is an enclosed cabinet. What does that mean? The TV is in and sides keep the TV in its place. Whereas my Bivik cabinet, yes, it is an external mounted TV. Pros to that is that you can put any TV to it. 
And if you ever need to like swap a TV, let's say a TV dies, it's an easy one, two, three. In this situation, in all honesty with Game Room Solutions, you gotta really take apart the entire cabinet. Luckily this cabinet is cam locked, so it is quite a process. It's not super easy, but it is a process. If this, if this TV dies, I've yet to have a TV die, but if it does, it will take some doing to take out the TV. Now also, in the early stages of Game Room Solutions, you had to get the correct spec TV slash size of the TV. Older TVs, now again, this is a 32 inch, I use the insignias. I use the cheapest TV on this, number one, to keep the price low, and number two, it's a Pandora box. This isn't outputting 4K, this isn't playing Tekken 6, this isn't playing 120 hertz gaming, this is just your basic. So you don't need a crazy TV, this is a basic TV. I've had customers that have this cabinet and they actually put a fire stick to it, that's cool. HDMI, the HDMI ports are open in the rear. You can add your own stuff. You want to add a PlayStation to it? Cool. Will it work with the arcade sticks? No. But at least you have a multi-use TV. That's also another pro to my BiVic or just using smart TVs in general. The time crisis that just went out, I told the wife, I was like, you could put Pandora to this. You could put YouTube on this. You could use this as a regular TV in your house, whether you want to put another uh, you want to put the Nintendo Switch on it? Cool. So she did say to me, she's like, can I use the guns on the Nintendo Switch? I'm like, no, that you can't do. Basically, all I'm saying is that you have a TV. It's a smart TV. In her situation, it was a smart TV. You have smart TV functions. You want to use Netflix on it? Awesome. I could get a smart TV on this, but the only downside to that is you no longer have the ability of flipping the switch and the TV automatically turning on. This TV is great, I love this. This is the Insignia 32 inch basic LED TV. It's the lowest, cheapest costing TV. And the biggest feature is when you put the power on, it turns on as you see in the video. You don't need a remote. That's like the base, biggest point of it. So again, going back to the customer, he saw my Neo Geo, he's like, Vic, I want that. And like I said earlier, plexiglass is just something that I, I don't want to deal with. So my control panels on my regular arcade cabinets, the Bivix, I actually get this textured, uh, Gulf Coast decals called an Imbos textured control panel. Game Room Solutions has plexiglass on the control panel and they use plexiglass here. I could cut plexiglass straight like this. That's not a big deal. But if I've always, I've, I've already done it. I've never, I've said I, I don't do plexiglass anymore. I don't do plexiglass on control panels. My CNC will melt the plexiglass, the circles won't come out good, I just ignore it entirely. Vic, you can cut plexiglass by hand. You know how much of a fucking headache that is? <laughs> you know how much work it is to drill 20 holes and making sure that it's all precise? No, I got the CNC for that. But my biggest thing is basically the plexiglass. Having that plexiglass sit and stay in position, Game Room Solutions does it well. They have like the slotted grooves and all that. It's already done. But me personally, basically what I'm trying to get at in this video, I don't do enclosed cabinets. I just don't. Anybody that wants an enclosed cabinet, I always say just do the Game Room Solutions cabinet. Again, the biggest fear is if that TV dies. Let's say in transit that TV cracks, that you gotta take the whole thing out. It's, it's a nuisance. I just wanna deal with it. So again, the customer saw my Neo Geo. He goes, Vic, I want this. I said, listen, I don't, I don't cut this anymore. You know, he was a tough boy, like, Vic, I'll pay. I, just, I don't want to deal with it anymore. So you'll, you really won't see my Neo Geo ever again. Um, not even for the right amount of money. It's just, it looks beautiful from the cameras, but when you actually walk up to it, me personally, like I know for a fact my plexiglass, you know, again, this has all the grooves and all that. My, an enclosed cabinet is just not something I want to do. Even, for example, my Nintendo Switch Konami cabinet, I won't do that again. Game Room Solutions actually has a Konami cabinet now. So they, they could help. They, they already have the cabinet and all that. So the only big thing though is that this right here, I cannot put this on casters. There's no way that this could go on casters. It has MDF on it. It's just too brittle. It is too risky to put it on casters. I feel like the whole base will kind of give way. But that's the back story to it. This customer wanted my Neo Geo. He basically said, Vic, my main thing is something that is easy. I don't want to get a call at 11 o'clock at night and hey, how do I power this game on? He wanted something, number one, that was easy, and number two, something that was slim, that didn't take up that much room. I was gonna offer him the regular 32-inch Game of Solutions cabinet that I've always done. And, oh, and also third point, he wanted the cheapest option as possible. 
He wanted the cheapest. He originally wanted Trackwall, Lightgun, all that. I gave him a price, but then I also said it doesn't mix with commercial. So he's like, okay, you know what? I feel relieved that I shouldn't do a PC-based system. But when I gave him the price for it, his eyes went, whoa, I wasn't thinking it was gonna be that much. And I'm like, yes, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot going on on it. So he goes, Vic, I need something that's very low price. This is why I also give the option for Game Room Solutions cabinets. This is a third party CNC cut. The only downside to these cabinets is the side walls are cut. There is a line right here in the middle of this cabinet. That is the only thing that sucks about these cabinets. They have to do that though to ship it. They, I, I, I remember talking to Ryan a while back. They really have like a, as far as shipping, so you don't get hit with like the freight size. They had to cut the side wall, basically. So that's like my only downside. Other than that, it works. Is it the best? No, but it works. It gets the job done. Now, if you ever inquire about a cabinet, Vic, what's the price, what's the price? I usually always end my email. I give you the price if it's a buy Vic cabinet, and then I usually end the email and I say, if you would like to save a couple of hundred dollars, we would then go and look into a third party person. That's what I write in the email. Then later on, I mentioned it's Game Room Solutions because you know I always try to get the customer to email me back. First emails, most of the time, I get a first email and then you don't get a reply back and I'm like, okay, this person wasn't a serious customer. So I always say I have a third party to save a couple hundred. Yes, it is a Game Room Solutions cabinet. There are obviously pros and cons. Pro, you save a couple of hundred. It's a couple hundred, not gonna lie to you. It saves me time to cut the wood. The biggest con is that it's not custom made. The artwork, the vinyl, it's not gonna have that shiny stuff to it. If you want me to do shiny, now you're, gonna, now you're basically back to square one. Honestly, you're back to square one because vinyl for a cabinet like this is probably gonna run me about, I don't know, to save myself and ballpark it, I would say about 350, 400 bucks. I mean, you're talking gloss vinyl from uh, Gulf Coast decals and such. The biggest con is this seam. You might not see it on the camera, but in person you do see the seam. Is it a big deal? To me it's not. To some people it's catastrophic. Vic, I don't want a seam. Okay, you gotta pay me. You gotta pay me to run my CNC and build a solid piece. You wanna save a couple hundred dollars though? Here is your option. Now it's crazy, again, I mentioned TikTok before. We're gonna go to like the social media part of it. I just posted this video on TikTok yesterday. And again, I, before in the past, I, I, I still am not, I don't really care about view count, I really don't care. But it's just kind of mind blowing when you just see the numbers go up and then all of a sudden you see DMs go up and then all of a sudden you see comments going up. I just posted the video on this, it's a, I don't know, it's like a, a two minute video. And within like five hours, you, I hit 40,000 views. And that's like insane for me to even like say that verbally. It's uh, mind blowing. <laughs> now, the biggest thing, and people, if you see the comment section, it's crazy. What is the price? What is the price? What is the price? I never write prices. Never. I never do it. I don't write it on socials. I don't write it. I always say, email me. Because honestly, again, people are going to take this video and other videos. If I mention a price for this, they're going to go, let's say, 10 years from now, and the prices went up on everything like inflation does. Oh, hey, Vic, you have this video and you said it was this price. What happened to that? You're ripping people off. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> That's why I don't do it. I honestly feel like I did that in my earlier videos with the bar tops. And then people still hold me to it on that. So I never write pricing. Same thing on my website. You got to DM me. The other big reason I don't write pricing is that everything varies. Pricing varies. What does that mean, Vic? I don't understand what you mean. There's different systems, there's different joysticks, there's different buttons, there's different TVs, there's different cabinets, there's so many things going on. And I get it, people will, like on TikTok, they go, hey, I want the price for this cabinet. How much is this cabinet? So I wrote the price, and then all of a sudden you get hit with the questions like, oh, okay, cool, it has like Marvel versus Capcom 2, right? And like, it does have Wii, right? And I'm like, no, it doesn't. That's why pricing varies. <laughs> people will expect light guns, at this price, it's it it is mind blowing. It is crazy. I'm not like I'm not trying to sound negative, but that's why I don't write pricing. I number one will save myself because again, I could just see it in the future. Somebody just writing the price and all that. It happens even now with pinball. Look at pinball. People are so mad at how much the pinball distributors are charging for pinball machines. Oh, it wasn't like that six years ago. It wasn't like that three years ago. Everything went up. 
okay, you're gonna bitch and moan no matter what. Even if you sold the price, you're gonna bitch and moan about it. So it is what it is. The biggest thing that people just don't understand is it all varies. It, it all varies, especially the system inside. And the one thing that annoys me is that people assume that I could make a 43 terabyte PC with Jolt or Time Crisis light guns by Vic, 55 inch cabinet for $3,000. And I go, you just know. No, 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 2024, no. <laughs> anyway, I don't wanna get lost track. Let's get back to this. Let's talk real quick about Game Room Solutions. I have no bad blood with Game Room Solutions. I think you could kind of see it. Can you see this? We're gonna be talking about this. Your eyes don't deceive you. <laughs> I don't have bad blood with Game Room Solutions. They really originally, I started with them. That is how I got my start. And it was great, I was doing my other job. I would order cabinets, I would build a cabinet at my job and I would sell. I, I'm perfectly fine with Game Room Solutions. I have no, nothing bad, nothing bad. And I still give the option for a Game Room Solutions cabinet. So it is awesome, but again, in my realm, I have a lot of people that want custom. They either have custom size requests, they either have custom button layout requests, that's just how it is. That's why I would rather cut my own wood. Not to mention I use better wood, I don't use MDF. Again, a lot of pros and cons, okay? Every builder has their own pros and cons and such. My biggest thing is that I still use Game Room Solutions, as you can see, even in my past video with the pedestals. If I need something quick, I have a customer that wants it quick and they want it cheap, Game Room Solutions. There's no, not, no other substitute. Game Room Solutions, they, they will do those two things that you need. Now, the biggest thing again, and if you, Watch my past videos, I mentioned this thing about this cabinet, and this is kind of shocking, and I'm very lucky that this customer did not need this before or slash a holiday gift. I'm very lucky. I ordered those pedestals that you just, literally the video went live today, and I'm shooting the video today for this one. I ordered those pedestals and this cabinet at the same time, which was Black Friday. Today, the date of today, the video's not gonna go out until next week, the date of today is January 13. From Black Friday to January 13, this is what I was able to finally finish. I got all my orders in. I I did my pedestals real quick. Within like this, the, the, I got my boxes and then the second day, and I learned it from my past experiences with Game Room Solutions. If you are watching this and you're thinking about getting a Game Room Solutions cabinet, once you get your cabinet, the number one thing is open the box. Open the box and look at all the parts. Even if you're not gonna build it right now, you're gonna build it tomorrow. You're gonna build it next week. Don't give a shit. Open the box. Luckily I did. And what do I come to my surprise? They messed up my control panel. Now get this, this is a double whammy situation. Again, 32 inch cabinet here. On the past 32 inch cabinets, they give you the option of add-ons. Do you want a dedicated four-way? Cool, we'll add it on. You want a trackball? Cool. You want pinball buttons? Cool. You just kind of simply check a box. On this cabinet design, it didn't give you add-on options such as a dedicated four-way. I wrote in my notes, and I wrote there, I want a dedicated four-way. I get an email back, they go, Vic, we can make it happen. Here's an invoice to pay for that extra modification that you need. That is a $40 modification. In my mind, I'm like, shit, do I need to pay this $40? Can I do it myself? I was like, you know what? I am gonna be building the other stuff. I'm not gonna take my risk. I will pay the $40, fine. It is a-okay. It wasn't an option there, so I can't complain, but I paid the $40. I get the notification, your shipment is sent. Awesome, and if you watch my pedestal video, you will see the first one. <laughs> Look at that dedicated four-way cut. It's beautiful, right? I said the same thing in the last video. Sure enough, I look at it. I'm like, where's my dedicated four-way? I send a message to Game Room Solutions. Hey, I paid $40. I didn't get my dedicated four-way cut. Oh, Vic, I'm so sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry, actually. No. The first email back, we're going to need some photos and proof that we didn't cut the dedicated four-way. Until we get that, you know, evidence we will then proceed to make things right and i was like son of a bitch you i was like all right i you know fine send them the pictures 
And then they go, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know how they mix that up. We will get one out to you cut today and such. Took about a day a day or two to cut. That's a okay, that's fine. Now though, by the time they cut, by the time they send it and ship it, it adds a week. I have to wait a week. You know what the worst thing is? You cannot build the cabinet unless you have all the parts. <laughs> so, you know, and it's kind of crazy with this design here, the other 32 inch cabinets, the control panel is a separate piece. Meaning basically it's being held by like a, like a door hinge. This design, it is enclosed. So you need to, it goes inside the side panels. So without this, you cannot build your cabinet. That delays me. So I had to wait a week. I get in the mail, my second control panel. Yay! I got the second control panel. Hooray! I actually, and I'm so mad at myself, I actually went, I got excited, and I went and I assembled the cabinet. I assembled this. Everything. I then start putting in the buttons. Well, I already did put the buttons in, but I didn't notice it until the end. But I'll bring you close. Look at this. Can you see this right here? Do you see an issue here? Coin and start. Coin and start. Let me bring you here if you can see it better here. Look at this. Coin and start. Coin and start. I was so pissed. You have no, I have so pissed. I built the cabinet and then I noticed it and I put the buttons here and I'm like, what the hell? I was like, I had to send another message to them. And again, I'm already furious because I already built the cabinet and that's all right. That was my mistake. I should have, I should have, I should have looked, but it was just kind of, it's so close, but yet so far. Sure enough, they get the same thing. Please send us a photo proof of evidence. And I sent that. And then I got the email back. Vic, we're so sorry. She actually wrote this. She's like, oh, Mike, these guys are killing me. <laughs> I guess her employee, she's like, these guys are killing me. Uh, we're very sorry. We will get it fixed. And we will, you know, I'll send you a new one. Now, that is another week. That is another week delay. I got the new control panel in. And it is finally correct. So yes, I have these two and the extra one. And I have two plexis. So they actually sent me the control panel without the plexi because the plexiglass was good on this. It's just the artwork was wrong. And it was actually very funny when I sent them the, the email about this, she wrote something that I took it as, we could send you new vinyl. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not good. I don't, that's another thing. I'm going to mention my, my, my suggestion to them. They, I, I said that I was like, I wrote an email. I was like, I don't understand. Like you want to send me a vinyl and I'm going to, I'm going to take that risk of applying it straight correctly and lining it up. And then they're like, no, no, it's okay. We'll send it to you applied already. So they definitely implied to send me just the vinyl. Now me, I most likely would have been able to do it. A newbie. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. So yes, there's my little dilemma. And again, I am just so grateful that this customer did not need this for the holidays. Now, what sucks, this is why I don't work with people. This is why I work alone. This is why I hate dealing with third parties because as you could see, this delay was not my fault. But me trying to explain it to a customer, they don't give a shit. They don't want to hear it. It is your fault. It is my fault. Now, in all honesty, I most likely will not make any money on this bill because of this huge delay. Oh, Vic, that's not, that's, that's your problem. You should have cut it. Back to square one where I want a cheap cabinet though. I need the cheapest of cheapest that I could get. It is what it is. <laughs> you could, you know, you, again, I, I use my videos as a, not a venting thing, but I just kind of talk. And whether you listen to it or not, or you enjoy these videos, I really could care less. I like making these videos. So there you go. But again, basically right now, I'm not going to make anything on this cabinet. Customer was cool. Crane guy. Awesome. But you know, I would, I, I would have some nerve to ask for what I would normally charge on this 
Uh, and the dude had to wait like a month. And it's crazy. You could see it. Those two decks right there, that is two weeks of waiting. I order the cabinet, that's already a one week, it is a three week, I've never done that honestly. If the first control panel would have came back the right way, this would have been done for Christmas holidays. But because my, my, my fate was in the hands of somebody else and it irks me, it is what it is. My only thing, and this is something that would possibly help slash work and then it possibly won't. And I would, I would like to hear if it's doable. My only thing I would probably suggest, and I do it right now with Game of Solutions, I actually tell them, don't put the team holding. Do not include the team holding on mine. I want to put the team holding. Why do you do that, Vic? Because in the rear, you might not be able to see it on camera. I'm going to actually probably bring you a little bit closer. Let me move it. Use my new camera. There you go. Hello. You can't see this right here. You might be able to see the seam, which you can't do anything about. There's nothing you can do about this. Also, this new construction, I never, this is like their new design. Um, they don't even have like the swinging door here. It's only on the bottom. It is what it is. But me, I always ask, do not put the T-molding. I will put the T-molding. This way, that T-molding, it is slim. I want that, I want that as, as, as clean as possible. No cut on the T-molding, because honestly, when the T-molding is cut, your eyes gravitate right to this and you could see like what's wrong with this cabinet. Why is this cut? So I always ask for the T-molding not to be installed. I basically, this is right here, the start point and it goes up and down and around and down and up and up and up and end point. No cuts in between. The only thing I would ask Game of Solutions is if they could give me the artwork not applied. That would probably be the best thing to eliminate that crease that would be the best thing, but the only thing is no matter what, it will look cleaner, but you're still gonna have that little bit of like, you know, the, the panels never line up. It might have a little bit grooved inside and it might be outside and I just would like to try that. Maybe I'm gonna ask them. The only thing though is that I don't know how they cut their vinyl. There are some companies, like I remember when I did that WrestleFest for the Arcade 1UP, you know, people basically do it exactly to this outline and they leave like a half of an inch of bleed. In that case, you really gotta be precise. My personal cabinets that I do, I order a whole rectangle, lay and then cut. What does that mean? Basically this like right here, can you see that? Yeah. This right here, like I would have artwork actually right here. It costs the same. And why am I gonna risk and with my measurement, like why risk it? I would just want a whole piece of rectangle. I would ask if I could just do my own vinyl. That's probably what I, would, what I would ask, if I could do my own vinyl. That might look better, to be honest. Now again, their new line, I've seen their new line last year. It's actually a year to date, probably. A year, you know, last holiday. Uh, I had that customer that did the 43 inch. Uh, I did the Dell Optiplex build for him. And I saw the new design. This right here is like a solid piece. Uh, it's actually half inch, this door. You need to unscrew it to remove it. And it's basically just one kind of swinging door. That's all it is. Pros and cons, they now have like this new, it's actually a dual, like, um, I don't know, it's a dual post here to, you know, keep the, the sides intact and fairly lined up. But as you can see, no matter what, it doesn't ever line up perfectly. Some pictures, yes, that I've taken in the past, it is just clean pictures, it's, it's, it's a picture. You don't really see the seam. But I always pointed out in my videos, there is a seam here. You do see a seam. Now, again, I haven't ordered from Game of Solutions in a while. They did some changes. The biggest thing, and I mentioned it in the pedestal videos, um, I ordered everything one shot. I thought they kept everything, you know, basics, but uh, I should have known when I saw the price of things. But they basically changed their arcade buttons to these, like, single, you know, it's just an all-in-one button. There's no external micro switch. It's convenient. It's definitely easier for people to wire up, I guess. But me personally, I'm not a fan of these. So note to myself, I will no longer be ever ordering the button kits I should have ordered from my regular people. The other thing also, if you look very carefully, and I mentioned the customer going to my basement, my Neo Geo cabinet has industry Lorenzo joysticks. 
He saw my other joysticks. He saw the sand ones I have on my Nintendo Switch cabinet. He's like, Vic, I like these. This is like what childhood was to me. I remember like the feeling of the joystick. I'm like, yeah, I know. Industry Lorenzo. Now, if you go with Game Solutions, there's a couple of things you have to do to get the Industry Lorenzo joystick to even fit. Number one, Game Room Solutions gives you the hardware to like, um, you know, mount the joystick, which is this little gold sliver thing. It's like a nut and then the screw. Unfortunately, the screw they give you will not, it's not long enough for an Industry Lorenzo joystick. The base on those joysticks are just too thick. Um, uh, basically, with how I build my control panels, I have my gold nut style thing and I have my screws. So, yes, Industry Lorenzo joysticks on a Game Room Solutions cabinet. No, the hardware that they give you will not fit it. So you will have to do something about it. Really, the best thing for these joysticks, it should have the four screws. Um, you know, kind of just nut, you know, nut in the bottom. Those really stay pretty tight. Uh, but now you're going to have screws on your control panel. So uh, it is what it is. But yes, if you do see it closely, this is Industry Lorenzo joysticks. Clean wiring as always. Another downside to the Game Room Solutions um, buttons is they are the very tiny um, spade connectors or the female spade connectors. I have my regular standard side spades. And again, you could see my past video on doing a Pandora box, how I gut it and then move it. I basically have to extend all the wires. Everything here gets extended. The stock Pandora box wiring is not long enough for this. You have to do some soldering. You need new wiring and such. So basically I extended the Pandora box wires, but I had to use, um, I use the, uh, the, the, the wiring that came with Game Room Solutions encoders. Um, if I could find one, that'd be awesome. So Game Room Solutions, the encoders they have now is these SJ at JX. And basically there, hopefully my new camera with like the focus. Boom. Awesome. So as you can see, that is a micro like female spade. So they give you the SJ at JX. I basically took the connectors and I cut them. And basically that's my extension wire there. So solder to the Pandora box wiring and that's your length there. So again, stock to solder, you have enough. I always have a little bit extra wiring on it. Clean wiring as always on the builds and yeah. So again, for me Percy, just a mental note, I will no longer be getting the button kit uh, from Game Room Solutions. Might as well just get it on my own and get real true arcade hardware. These buttons are all right, they're nice. Can't lie, they are nice. They are sensitive though. The lightest like press will activate the switch. So again, in arcade terms, there's micro switches with different grams. Basically, you know, how much weight to press will actually push the button. You could do different grams like that. But yes, just wanted to throw that in there. Now this is made with MDF, not the particle board that you saw on the half inch. This is MDF. Um, it is what it is. Honestly, that is, this is probably end rant of gaming solutions. It is a nice looking cabinet. I like it. It's very slim. It's almost view links esque. Um, the control panel though, I will note, it is a little bit lower than the other 32 inch cabinet. It's a little bit lower. Now somebody said, Hey Vic, maybe it's designed so you could sit. I mean, you can see the stool. Again, I may, no, I mean, I could sit. But my, my knees are not going underneath this control panel. Again, this is, a, this is your basic stool. Arcade one up, stool, basic stool. I could game, but me and my buddy right now, our knees would bump. I would probably have to move to the corner. Now this is just awful gaming. This is arcade one up gaming right here. Uh, I don't like it. But I'll be honest, I kind of like the height of this. It's, uh, it's comfortable, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's comfortable. To good, it's it. The biggest thing with this cabinet is the slim. It's not as huge. It is very modern. I would call it that. It's a modern cabinet, especially like if you have a wife, girlfriend, whatever, whoever is the interior designer of your household, they might like this because it's not huge. I like it. Marquee, pretty cool. Now the big thing also to save money, the customer wanted. 
I sent the customer all the artwork from Game of Solutions. I said, here's the website, pick your art. If you need me to custom make artwork, I gotta charge you by the hour. Or I gotta get my designer, I gotta pay him. People gotta get paid. This takes time. And in all honesty, probably for 2024, I will most likely now be adding the cost of the designer. Uh, I would have my artwork guy, uh, which is Gaston. Gaston Designs. You will see him on an upcoming build coming up. We have the four player rail shooter coming up. And I do have the another pinball. I'm doing a V pin and I already got Gaston working on the V pin part of it. So you're talking about an actual artist, an actual person that will do artwork. You got to pay him. That's what it is. Again, this customer wanted the lowest, lowest, lowest pro price. We had to go with a pre-made Game of Solutions style design. Game of Solutions did this artwork. It was really for the regular 32 inch cabinet, uh, but then um, Tyler sent me the revive, basically a re, you know, they basically just cut it to fit this, this slant or whatever. Um, but yes, uh, it is what it is. It's kind of cool. The Last Supper is a cool little touch. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. It's cool. Artwork is cool on it. It's your multi cade artwork. That's what the customer wanted. It's gonna go in an Airbnb. It will, you know, gravitate. People will just walk up to it like, whoa, what is this? And my kiddo, I can't see it here, but my kiddo keeps saying something about Bowser's eyes. He's like, do you see Bowser's eyes? And I'm like, I don't. <laughs> I, there's Bowser here, but I, whatever, the kiddos. <laughs> now, real quick, we're talking about the custom thing that this customer needed, which, again, I'm the type where I, I ask questions but I only kind of ask it once or twice and then that's it. The customer basically makes up their mind. This customer had this thing where he wanted a simple power switch for, for people to get to. And uh, now that I say it, I understand now the power switch idea. Um, he had two things he needed. He, he needed this like to turn on. Number one, like I said, Airbnb. I want something simple, Vic. Turn it on and go. Pandora box built, easy stuff. He requested this power switch. He wanted a power switch that's easy, accessible, viewable, and basically, you know, if you want to play it, just flip the switch. Normally there is a power switch on the rear. These where the plug is, it's your basic standard, you know, I don't know the exact terminology, but it's like the, the basic power plug. <laughs> like, a, like a computer power plug, the computer thing, the three prongs. It's got that and an orange switch. It has that. Um, and he goes, I just don't want people, you know, pulling the cabinet out and then flipping the switch. And I'm like, all right, the cabinet, whatever. Uh, he wanted this power switch. Um, the other thing he said to me, he goes, I want it also where in case, and again, this doesn't, the logic doesn't really add up. He goes, in case like, you know, the person that was in the Airbnb leaves and they left it on, I just want it where like, I'm gonna put like a sign and just say like, I'm gonna text, like I guess the Airbnbs you text when they close up and they're gonna lock the door. And he's gonna basically put there, just be sure to turn off the arcade. So I said to him, I said, you might as well just get a Wi-Fi plug. Just to make life easy. This way, in case the people leave and they didn't turn off the arcade, you could just look at your phone and see the switches on and then turn it off. And I understand the thing about not wanting to pull the cabinet forward and turning it on and off, but uh, yes. <laughs> I don't ask questions. That's I, that was the one thing I said. He was like, Vic, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. But I also still want the switch. Okay, that's it. Done. So this will get a Wi-Fi plug. I don't deal with that. Customers get it on their own. Get them cheap now. Um, so this will have a Wi-Fi plug to it so that, again, when he's home and he can look at his phone, if he sees the arcade still on or power is on, he can turn it off. But, again, he basically wanted this little switch here. <laughs> now it's kind of cool on the side here. It was a big thing. That's the only thing I really asked for a Tyler from uh, Game of Solutions. I have artwork here. I basically wrote there to power on or off, flip the switch. He just wanted wording there. And then also I have now on the control panel, just like what I did with the pedestals, it says here to exit game, hold start. That's it. Again, that, I, 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 whatever. You flip the switch, everything turns on. That's what's great with this Pandora box system. That's what's great with this Insignia. LEDs all around. It's basically wired to the power strip. You know why? I'm not gonna tell you how I wired that switch, but it is wired and correct. As you can see, we flip the switch, let it do its animation, let it do, let it boot up, and then you'll be gaming. Very simple. Again, 
Pandora box systems are the best when it comes to commercial or if you need something super simple, super easy. I want to get the kiddos involved. I want them to play, you know, some retro games. And I don't want a book and directions and, you know, when it comes to PC systems, you try to launch a game and all of a sudden you get an error and now you think your kid broke it and now it's just a push. Pandora box. <laughs> easy as easy can be. Yes, there are duplicates, but you have your main plethora. Right now, again, this is running my 18S Pro 10,000 games. They did a update to this. Uh, sadly, the one biggest thing, plus side though, this does have the marketplace, but the one biggest thing is that they did remove, um, uh, they removed Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Maybe it's inside the market store or whatever. Maybe you could download it later on, but sadly they did remove Marvel vs. Capcom 2. In all honesty though, in my opinion, that was the Dreamcast version. A lot of people want the arcade version. You do need a PC-based system to run that. So take that with what you will. But again, you want your basics, load up some Street Fighter, Galaga, Pac-Man, Metal Slug, uh, everything you can think of. It, it's just beautiful. It's great, it's awesome. And again, just like the instructions say to exit the game, hold the, the start button, you get the menu pop up, B to exit, and then you're back. Easy. Honestly guys, I think, I think that's it. I went over the cabinet, I went over my dilemma that I had, we talked about the customer, we talked about the system real quick. I have videos on the Pandora box build. Um, I like this Pandora box. I like it, and like I said in my past video, this could be, it will be my new four player Pandora box option. The only thing I do have to actually test is if I could do coin mode on this Pandora box. If you've seen like my DX, uh, my other videos, four player coin mode, it didn't work. Um, I will probably test that out. I won't do it on camera right now because I have to go to a birthday party with the kiddo. But all in all, it's it's a nice cabinet. I do I do like the design of the cabinet, very slim and such. Again, 32 inch curve is the label of it. 32 inch curve, two player setup with the dedicated four way. I always do dedicated four way. It is a must. Me doing all these arcade builds for years and years. I remember from my first ones, you know, the first ever complaint I got was, "Hey, Vic man, I'm trying to play Pac man." The joystick, there's something wrong with the joystick. And then I said, no, you need a dedicated four-way. So, yes. There you guys have it. VigVP Game Case Arcade. Stay tuned for way more stuff. Very excited for the four-player rail shooter coming up. And the V-Pin. Game on, my guys. Game on. Love it.